Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Dino and today is another episode of Tinker Tool Time. Today we're going to take a look at this, which is a shop press. And I'm going to tell you, if you have room for one of these things in your shop, they are a super useful tool and they can do much, much more than just a regular bench vise can when it comes to pressing bearings or flattening and bending metals. Now I'm not an expert with one of these things, but I have learned a few things from people over the years and I'm going to pass on the tips that I learned to make this safer for you and maybe get more out of it as you work with one. Before we get into the shop press itself here, I want to say thank you and give a shout out to Mal J1978. Now Mal has been a subscriber to this channel probably for two years, about a month after I started it, he subscribed and he's never failed to comment on every single video that I've made. And his comments are very, very helpful to this channel because he's very, very insightful. When he found out that I was going to do a video on a shop press, he reached out to me via email and supplied some photos of different jigs and devices that he's made for his home shop press like mine to make his life easier. He also sent some pictures of his DR650, which is an absolutely fantastically equipped DR. You can see in these photos here, he even has ammo cans mounted down near his feet for extra storage. Now Mal's been on a motorcycle since the mid 60s and he told me that he took a break while his children were growing up, but now has uh, a BMW and a DR650 that he's logged over 200,000 kilometers on since he's owned them. He's an absolutely great person and you can see in these photos here that he has a great landscape to ride in over there in Australia. So Mal, thank you very much. I couldn't do this channel without people like yourself out there. So why don't we get in and we'll talk a little bit about shop presses. Most home mechanics usually buy a bench vise at some point. And if you had to make a choice between a bench vise and a shop press, you know, for your first tool, this is what I would buy as a bench vise. You can do a lot of pressing activities with one of these. I've changed a lot of U-joints on drive shafts using a bench vise. And they're very useful for holding things while you work with them, whether it's cutting metal or you can clamp some wood in there to sand it. They're really, really handy and they're very, very functional. But when it comes to actually pressing bearings, the precision and power of a shop press really sort of overshadows what a bench vise can do. But if you can only buy one or you only have room for one, I'd probably lean towards a bench vise like this ahead of the press. Okay, now that we've covered that, Let's take a look at the main components of one of these shop presses. Now the press itself is really based around this, which is a standard bottle jack. And in this case, it's a 12 ton bottle jack. And that seems to be about the right amount of pressure that I need for my shop. Now this one is a full manual style bottle jack, but you can find these that are air over hydraulic powered if you want to spend a little extra money. On the very top here of this H frame is the strongest component in the press itself. And this is the top crossbar. In this case, it's a piece of thick walled 70 millimeter square tubing with an additional 10 millimeter flat plate welded to the bottom here. And it needs to be that heavy because it's putting 12 tons of force straight up on this. You don't want this to bend. On the bottom of the jack, you're gonna see the actual press carrier here. And this moves up and down as the jack extends or retracts. And on the bottom of that carrier, you're gonna see this one inch spindle that's actually used to press your shafts or bearings, depending on what you want to do. Now, this carrier is suspended on these springs. These do two different functions. One is you can adjust these side to side to make sure that the press bed is nice and level or the press carrier is nice and level, but they also act as return springs. 
So when the jack extends and you release pressure, these springs pull the jack assembly back up and allow you to get your work out. Now, just below the actual carrier is your press bed. Your press bed is made out of two pieces of channel iron in this case, and it's got a space in between it. You can see my hand can go up through there. That allows you to put shafts down in through the bed itself, and then you're gonna use these press plates here with various shape cutouts to grab your bearing races, and in turn allows you to press the shaft out of the bearing race. Now, underneath the actual uh, bed itself, are these pins. Now these pins move up and down in a series of holes on the upright rails, which allows you to adjust the height of the bed in relation to the actual press carrier. That's pretty much the fundamentals of all the different components of a 12 ton shop press. Oftentimes people buy a shop press to actually press bearings either into a hub or onto a shaft. To safely do this, you should really understand how a bearing is built and how to properly register your pressing tools depending on whether, again, it's going into a hub or onto a shaft. I'm gonna break this bearing down into three major components. The first one is the outer race, the second is the inner race, and the third one is this caged ball bearing that runs all the way around. This particular bearing is a deep groove ball bearing, and how these work is both the outer and inner races have a groove machined all the way around on the inside surface of, of the outer race and the outside surface of the inner race. Those caged ball bearings roll in that groove extremely smoothly. You can see just how nice this bearing is. Most bearings either press into a hub, so a recess that has a slight interference fit on the outside race. The opposite is if you were to press this onto a shaft, so in this case a crankshaft. Then the interference fit is on the inside diameter of the inner race. When you go to press these, it's extremely important to identify whether the outer race or the inner race has the interference fit. If it's the outer race, you need to ensure that you only apply pressing forces on this surface here. Conversely, if it's a shaft that's fitting through the inner race, this is the surface that you want to apply pressing forces. And at no case or no time do you want to apply pressing forces on the balls themselves. Now, sometimes or oftentimes, there will be either a metal or a rubber seal that blocks out. You can't actually see these roller bearings or these ball bearings that are inside. That still means you shouldn't be pressing on that seal because all that does is keeps dust out of the grease that would be captured in there. So you might ask, how exactly do I isolate my pressing forces on either of these two surfaces? Well, for a home mechanic like myself, usually what you're gonna do is you're gonna use something like this, which is just, in this case, a large one and a quarter inch diameter socket. And what you'd see is if I wanted to press this onto a shaft, this actually lines up perfectly on that inner race. So I would put this over the shaft and then put this on top and press straight down on this surface. Let's say that this is actually a bearing for a trailer hub. Uh, this would be a fairly heavy duty one. Um, the ones that are on my trailer are a little smaller than this. But in that case, the interference fit is the outer race, the outside of the outer race. Often, if you don't have a shop press, you end up tapping this in either with a drift, you go from side to side and sort of tap it in square. But if you have a press, you can press this right straight into the hub. And the way you do this is extremely similar to the inner race, only this time you want to make sure you apply your pressing forces to the top of this outside race. To do this, I fit one of these seal drivers into my press. I have a bolt that I can put up through here. And you can see that it lines up very well to the outside of the race, it just fits to the inside a little bit. So as you press it in, the seal driver doesn't get stuck in the actual race itself or in the, uh, 
in the uh, recess, sorry, of the trailer hub. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can certainly use a socket if you have one large enough to fit. I don't. This is my largest socket that I bought, and it won't fit on the outside. It would press directly down on the ball bearings, which is what you don't want. But a good trick that I learned is to actually, you know, use an old race out of the hub. Normally when you buy the bearings, they're going to come with an extra set of races that get pressed into the hub itself. Now this is actually the one that comes from my trailers and you can see it's too small. But if I had the right size, I can flip that over and it would rest on the outside and then you can put something on the top, even a piece of plate steel or even a piece of hardwood and then you can press down on that and it would push the bearing race down into the hub. My friend Jason where I used to work, he's one of the mechanics, showed me this trick and what he does, he just takes a thin kerf cutoff wheel and puts a cut across an old race. That way when you press this into the hub itself, this will compress and allow you to take that back out. It won't get stuck inside the hub. It was a great trick that he showed me and I've been using this for years pressing bearings into hubs. Again, this isn't the right size, but if it was, that's a trick that I always save these old races and make pressing tools out of them. Let's press this bearing off of this shaft. So this is a pillow bearing. It's a, you know, a, a, a self-adjusting bearing. But in order to press this shaft out, I want to press it down this way. And in order to do that, I need to support the race here. You might be able to see that the race actually sits below the casting on this pillow block. Now, oftentimes people just use the casting as the support on this, and that can actually crack the casting. What we want to do is use something like this, and we'll slide that down over the shaft. It lines up with that race, and then we support the base here and press the shaft through. Let's try that over on the press now. Now with this pillow bearing and shaft sitting on one of the press plates on the bed, I can now apply some force down onto the shaft. Let's see how this works. Okay, so let's see if this will move. There we go. It's making some noise as it slides through but overall it's going well I have a challenge here though you can see that I won't be able to push it all the way through because my actual press shaft is the same size as this shaft so I'll put a socket in here that's just slightly smaller in diameter and now I can finish my pressing off I'm just gonna center that up and now I can push this all the way down and through. Let's see. And it really is that simple to press a shaft out of a bearing if you have the right tooling to do this. And these little shop presses really are the type of tool that you wonder how you got by without one once you own one. Now you can do a lot of different things with a shop press and simply pressing bearings or gears onto shafts. And I think what I'll do is I'll talk about the mods that I've made to my shop press and some of the different sort of tooling and jigs that you can get for these things to sort of make them even more useful. But that'll be in a different video because right now I'm already running over the 10 to 12 minutes that I wanted these videos to be. So until next time, I'm Dino. I really hope that you enjoyed these videos. And you know what? I'll hopefully see you soon here on Tinker Tool Time. Okay, bye for now.